Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next The Reckoning of Roku chapter analysis video. This one's going to be for chapter 53, which is called Something Meaningful. Once again, YouTube channel membership is enabled on the channel uh, if you want to help support and subscribing also helps. So we have a short chapter, it's from Giazzo's point of view, and effectively it's just a scene directly before the kind of funeral kind of ceremony for everyone who has died and then the funeral ceremony itself and the big setup within the book being that this is Roku having to give a big speech as the avatar but him saying the right thing this time whereas he completely messed it up in the earlier stages of the book. So um, we start off with Gyatso who is basically uh, meditating here. He's thinking about uh, Malaya, the cycle of life and death, and he's thinking about her life. Um, it says here, her sharp mind, her intimate knowledge of the land, her courage, her surprising sarcasm, her even more surprising softness, the way they've been they uh, qu so quickly opened to each other, uh, and so on. Every moment right up until their kind of final embrace, um, it says he is, even ends with like holy days, like super important to Gyatso here. Um, then something pokes Gyatso and he looks up and it's Roku and Roku has a new staff here. He has just finished um, making it this morning with the help of Sister Disha and interestingly it's made of red bamboo. Roku notes that he has not added the wings yet but this is his own personal air nomad staff soon to be glider and it's made out of the red bamboo from the island now if you go to 306 nothing about roku's staff of course looks different but you can say maybe he he was using a training one during that little moment in that episode and obviously this is newer material like it's getting retconned into a certain degree i'm guessing the intent is more that he makes his own staff practices with just a random one so that he doesn't ruin the custom made one and I think you can explain it away that way I don't think it's much of a problem but it's just worth kind of uh, having the, the quick discussion about it so yeah they go back and forth on that he tries to twirl the staff but drops it so he's not even used to, to using the staff like at all and Roku just says it's time and so it's the idea that yeah the ceremony is coming up and Gyatso can only think about Roku's terrible speech when they left the fishing village like from the early chapters of the book and he's hoping that Roku will have the right words to say this time. Roku even asks any advice and uh, Gyatso just says say what you needed to hear after you lost Yasu which is perfect advice because it relates to sort of the advice that uh, Roku gave to Gyatso to help him that was very important and now it's you know you know you, you know what the wrong thing to say at these type of things is say the right thing that will help people and so yeah we're at the funeral pyre ceremony here um, and we get the idea that there are seven people who have died and um, it is just the uh the people of the lombok clan here it says ulo was on the far right uh, sorry on the far left malaya's on the far right and in between were the bodies of the villagers who had been killed by the earthbender guards and um, they mention here no one has seen amihan in a while but they they don't assume she's dead so amihan is probably out there somewhere um and that's an interesting one because she um obviously seemed like she was okay with doing that and if the clan is going to move away from killing everyone Amihan is either going to have to adapt to that or kind of move on. So I'm wondering, is Amihan going to maybe be in book two? But interesting just to consider there. So yeah, everyone is 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 here, including Sister Disha and several other air nomads who had come with uh, Disha to the clan, of course. Um, Baku gets confirmed here. He is the, ch the, the clan's new chief. Uh, and we just address that usually the way this ceremony goes is that um, the, you know, they have the kind of solemn kind of typical funeral after the cremation they return return silently to the village and spend the rest of the night feasting dancing and telling stories of the departed and Yatsu is looking forward to this because he wants to learn as much about malaya as possible and um, then the ceremony actually happens and so um roku gives his speech and this is what he has to say there's nothing i can say in this moment to soothe your sorrow but i don't believe i should try to do so 
you have lost people whom you love deeply and fiercely, and that hurts. It hurts and it always will. We must let ourselves feel that pain. Greeting our grief like a blessing, like the unexpected arrival of an old friend at our doorstep. Do not keep the door closed, invite them in. Have some tea and spend some time catching up. Then when it's time, let them be on their way. That's what Roku has to say here. Uh, he does finish up with, may their, may their flames light our way. And as part of the ceremony, he makes a fire. Baku gets a torch, lights it from Roku's fire, and then lights Ulo's pyre. We get that uh, Kamau lights the one for his mother. And Malaya's parents do actually light Malaya's pyre, which is an interesting one given that she doesn't have much of a relationship with her parents. Now, obviously, her death, obviously it shows that they care to a certain degree. It kind of feels like you maybe wanted a little bit more to explain the details behind that, but uh, anyway, overall. But that's just the idea of the advice is effectively just like, don't come up with a kind of clever thing to immediately get yourself past the grief, but it's like, no, like, let it in experience it and take the time that is needed to deal with it and then move on with things um i like it, it, it it's it's well written and it makes a lot of sense um and obviously it, it feels like a very different experience than what obviously roku experienced at the funeral for yasu and I, and, and even gyatso with the death of yama the because of the way the air nomads are um they're kind of sense for because of our philosophies we're already we've already moved past the death of this person and just meditate on it type thing and this is what Gyatso needs it's what Roku needs and it's what all the people here on the island needs the idea is Roku gets this speech right perfectly and it's a really well done um, speech at this ceremony overall and yeah, he, he he goes back to Gyatso and is just like, how was that? And Gyatso just says, not bad, as they watch the fires of the pyres uh, grow and glow. Um, and that is this kind of quick chapter here. So just addressing the funeral, um, I think it's a good kind of bookend on this specific plot point of just Roku immediately stepping up to be a better avatar in these sort of like official capacity, having to give speeches. He's much more confident here, and especially the in this sort of a situation or surrounding dealing with death and uh, that sort of thing. Like the detail of he makes his own uh, staff in the kind of meantime, and um, that was kind of uh, cool. Especially the idea that Roku is now, I guess, going to carry around a staff that is made from the kind of main notable kind of thing on this island, one of them, the red bamboo of this island. That's kind of interesting to see. Um, you know, uh, I guess we'll see the the fully made with the wings uh, glider staff for Roku in probably book two, but a uh, cool little detail there. And just, you know, covering a few details in the book that I think are absolutely needed. Um, so solid chapter, I think, here uh, in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. But that has been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.